Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSiteScenery.com. Welcome back. Today we're going to have some fun and build that diorama that you just saw in the opening clips. Yep, that was all filmed on a small N-scale diorama. With that, we're going to focus on some easy yet realistic effects that will add a lot of much needed texture to our modeling. Texture, you ask? Yep, it's often easy to overlook this simple detail. Sure, there's a lot of commercially available paints and potions out there that can simulate a specific color, but most often they don't produce what should appear as a texture. Man, texture is everywhere. You see it on structures, vehicles, rolling stock, and rails. It's not limited to just rusty surfaces. It also appears on non-rusted or painted surfaces. For that matter, it's even on this old logging camp stove. Hey, Doreen, is supper ready yet? Um, no. So we as modelers strive for realism. We can use our creative licenses to apply what appears to be textures to our models. Again, we all know that there's a lot of products out there that can simulate colors found in the real world, but when it comes to texture, it's a whole different story. A quick glance at any well-done model can sometimes give the appearance of realism, but the added effect of texture on surfaces can go a long way in taking believability to a new level. All right, let's take a look at prototype track. Nothing real appears as a single solid color, not the rails, the tie plates, the spikes, or the ballast. Take a look at this track in all the details. As you can see, there's lots of colors, tones, and textures. <laughs> Did you catch that? In that group of clips, one of them was a model. It's true, the representation of texture was what made it somewhat believable. Well, there are no secret ingredients, but here's a quick supply list. You can pause the video if you need to. And with number four, don't be a wise guy. You know what I'm talking about. These are artist chalks from the craft store. There's a bunch of different earth tone colors, and that's a cheese grater from the dollar store. Anyone want to guess how much that cost? Sometimes you can find packs that have a lot of earth tone colors. Well, I'm going to start with this one because it looks like a rusty red color. Now remember, this isn't rocket science. I'm just going to grind it up until it turns into a fine powder. As far as acrylic paints go, I don't have any particular brand that I'm fond of. I simply keep a large variety on hand, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to use white. For the chalks, I typically take the colors that I'm going to use, grind them up, and then keep them in little storage containers. For this video, we're using red and black. Up until now, you've probably wondered how big or small the diorama is. You might be surprised to know that it's only 30 inches wide by 8 inches deep. I'm using gator board, but you can use almost anything. It's sized to fit into an existing loop of sectional track. I'm skipping ahead here as I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch me mount the track and roadbed to the base. Once I did, I sprayed it all with flat black spray paint. There's two reasons I do this. One is to cover all the plastic and metal surfaces as they don't look real. And the other is to add some bite for the chalk and paint. Okay, let's get back on track. Get it? Track? Oh, come on! Really, in this step, I'm painting the ties with the white acrylic paint. Trust me, this will all make sense. We have to create a natural balance between the highlights and shadows, and the white underbase will be the highlights. You don't have to be too careful, but you want to make sure you cover all of the ties. Don't forget the sides of the ties, as they can be visible once you have the ballast down. For the rails, we're going to use that red chalk powder we talked about earlier. We're going to take that chalk and mix it in with alcohol to create a soupy paste. Now, I don't have a ratio or a formula, so to speak, but you want to use just enough alcohol to keep it like a paste. If it's too thin, it won't cover or stick very well. Remember that flat black spray paint we talked about? Yep, that's going to help this stick to the rails. You want to make sure you cover the entire rail and any spikes or tie plates. There are some brands of track that come with what appears to be formed tie plates, but if the track you're using doesn't have that, you can still simulate it by adding the rust color in that area, just like this. Now I know what you're thinking. How could that ever look realistic? Well, we'll get there in a minute, but for now we have to clean it up and then dumb it down. This is end scale, so it's really small and it's easy to get sloppy. So I want to take a small brush and clean up the areas where the ties meet the tie plates. This will create a sharper transition between the two. It's that time. 
We've made it up like a clown. Now it's time to dumb it down. This is where we take that black chalk and turn it into powder. And I know earlier I used a cheese grater, but sometimes I use this blender to chop it up finer. I typically use a soft paint brush or a makeup artist brush and just brush it on. Is it going to be sealed? Yeah, that's the question I always get in the comments. Yes, yes, it'll all get sealed, and in sealing it, the wet adhesive will cause some of the chalk to creep into all the cracks and crevices, giving it a naturally weathered look while making the colors come to life. Once I finished the dusting, I applied some dirt-colored paint to the areas outside of the right-of-way. Unfortunately, I only had HO cork roadbed here. I was too lazy to go down to the shop, so I used it, and it was a little tall for end scale, so I added in some heavy white glue to the outside and started there. Unfortunately, I only had HO cork roadbed here, so to save time I used it. It was a little tall, and I didn't have plans to build up scenery around it, so I added in some white glue to the outer edges, and I built up the slope. I'm using a medium ballast, which is a gray blend. Again, it was a little big, and I think it was probably better suited for HO, but I sifted it before I applied it to the track. It worked out because it allowed the finer grains to drop down through the sifter, and that's what I used. I don't want to over explain this, so just sprinkle it on, brush it down the track, making sure most of the ballast stays below the ties. Go through and clean it up and make it look nice. It's time to seal the ballast. I use a bunch of different methods, but for this one we're going to use a real simple method that not only makes it easier, it makes it look better. Why does it look better? Good question. Sometimes, depending on the size of the ballast, white glue mix can make it look clumped. Sure, you can dilute that white glue mix and apply several applications, but either way, some of the finer grains of ballast get melted together. Hairspray goes on as a fine mist and easily saturates the small grains. Yeah, I could have gone a bunch of different routes with this diorama, but I wanted it to be quick and I wanted it to serve as a simple photo diorama. With that, we're going to add some ground cover in the way of finely sifted real dirt. I'm using that same dirt colored paint along with white glue in a 50-50 mix. This will be the under adhesive for the dirt. Whoa! Hold it right there. Now before you ask, I've been using real dirt on my layouts and dioramas for the better part of 45 years. Never once have I seen any bugs and nothing has ever grown out of that thin layer of dirt. For that matter, I've never had any mysterious metal particles creep up and ruin my locomotives. Yep, I've heard it all. Bake it, fry it, run a magnet over it. It's your layout. Do what you want. <sighs> okay, back to business. After I applied the sifted dirt, I give it a nice overcoat of hairspray to seal it all in. Once that's done, you'd never know anything had ever been sprayed on it. If you'd like more information and see a demonstration on preparing real dirt, check out our previous video right here on our channel. Well, that's it for this little guy. Add a few trees, a backdrop, and bada bing. You have a nice little photo diorama with just enough color and texture to be believable. Of course, it's just a model, and in this case, just a diorama, but either way, it's a reflection of real life in miniature. Dioramas give you the chance to experiment with new techniques. Another previous video on our channel highlights having fun with dioramas. Okay, I'm going to let the video roll and leave you with some of my favorite live diorama scenes. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.